I'm Graham and welcome back to the Commodore Cave. Today I'm going to look at computer technology that went back pre-Commodore 64s before the big boom. Commodore started off in the 1950s making mechanical calculators and typewriters. But I'm not going back quite that far. I'm going to go further another 15 or 20 years when they entered the field of electronics. And some of the first devices they came up with were these simple eight digit calculators. Uh, these were very attractive because they were relatively inexpensive for the day. Uh, I recall my math teacher having something not as sophisticated as this and it was about 80 Australian dollars which was probably two weeks pay. These calculators came out between 1973 and 1976 and they boasted the floating decimal points. Amazing. They had the small bright LEDs and they ran on usually 9 volt batteries. I recall back in the early to mid 1970s my father bought me an amazing birthday present. It was a real LED digital wristwatch. It is the first time I'd ever seen or even heard of such a device. They were amazing and none of my friends had them either. They were quite incredible. Uh, the one I had was very similar to this. This is a new old stock. Obviously not powered up at the moment. Uh, they had small bright LED displays on them to see the time and you had to have them just in the right position and light to be able to see them clearly. Uh, there's another one. This one has the leather band on it uh, and Commodore started off with those as well. Then we have a couple more fabulous old Commodores to check out. And this computer came from the Kim 1 era. It is the original technology. And very pleasing, it came in its box as well, with packaging and instructions included. This came without any real screen at all. You'd simply plug it in, give you the chirp, and then you'd have a display up here which would tell you what places to move. You'd have a real chessboard alongside you, input your moves, and then it would calculate what it wanted to do in response, and then you'd put that on the chessboard. This is a VIC-20. It was released around 1980 by Commodore as the first home personal computer. It came with the darker chocolate keys, which I believe are delicious, uh, the orangey function keys, and the creamier type red bean case, which we came to see later on. This is the PET 8032SK. SK means separate keyboard, so that actually detaches. On off button is at the back here. We turn it on and we should get the chirp. There it goes. And the screen will slowly come to life. We've got 31743 bytes free, ready to go. This is the Commodore CBM 4016. Again, this one also has an SD card reader. These computers were affectionately known as PET. Uh, however, that actually meant personal electronic transactor, but it sounded a lot nicer having PET. They were very popular in schools and you could open them up. They've got a metal case, incredibly heavy, uh, which made them harder to steal, which was probably why they were more popular in schools. And there's a quick look at the motherboard. Of course the monitor is sitting up there. Around the back we have our ports and I've got the SD card reader plugged into here. So I don't need to use a floppy drive. And 
we have Commodore Basic 4 again. This one's got a wedge installed in it. Uh, 31743 bytes free, and there's our ready prompt. Very nice. This is a short demo called Hawaii. This is one of the first floppy disk drives. In fact, it's a dual floppy disk drive uh, produced by Commodore Model 8050. It's a full-blown self-contained computer. Runs on the five and a quarter disks. One on each side and spins up as does this one here. Uh, and underneath the hood, not only do we have the two floppy disk drives, we also have a fully self-contained computer. This one is the Commodore P610. P stands for personal computer as opposed to the Bs, which are business. It was part of the CBM2 series. Uh, this is unusual because it's the only one that came out without a screen. The P610 is a mono 80 column display. Uh, it handles basic quite happily, runs anything pretty much in basic. And it came out in 1983, discontinued about a year later. Uh, there are only about 10,000 of these ever made as far as we can tell. And if we turn it around to the back, you can see the ports. I'll open the case and we'll have a look at what's under the bonnet. Here we have the uh, internal speaker. That's where the sound's coming out of. We have our 16 memory chips for the 128K of standard memory, but they've also put provision in there to add another 16 chips. So quite a simple matter to have this computer enhanced up to the full 256K. A lot of the chips in this computer are shared with the Commodore 64 as well, such as the PLA, the sound chip, the SID, uh, that produces three mono voices. And we have the uh, 6526 CIA input output chip, um, these are all common to the 64. Um, it does have a different CPU, a 6509, and that runs at double the speed of the 64 at 2 megahertz. The VIC-20 came out in 1980, and it was the first computer of any type to break through the 1 million barrier. It only had 5K of RAM available to the user, the equivalent of about one filled page of text. The computer could use these rather large cartridges to port and our ports on the back. On that side is nothing. On this side we've got provision for one control port on off and the power switch. By 1982, 800,000 of these computers have been sold, but the 64 was on the horizon and its time was limited. By 1984 it was discontinued. We've seen this computer before, the Commodore Max machine. Came out in 1982, it had a lot of similarities to the 64 and in many ways was the predecessor for the 64. Unfortunately it only came out with 4K of RAM, which means when you turn it on, that's what you got on the screen, nothing. It was useless if you didn't have the cartridges, so you had to actually get the cartridges and plug them in and then you could run basic or games from that. It gets faster and faster until they're right on top of you. This is the easy bit, doesn't last for long, believe me. The Max was released in 1982 and ended production in 1983. At launch it was going for 235 US. Uh, the processor in it is the MOS 6510, running at one megahertz. It had a measly four kilobytes of RAM. The graphic chip was the famous VIC-2. Resolution was 320 by 200 and uh, colours were 16. The sound chip was the famous MOS SID chip, 6581. Sound had three voices, all mono. And I've left the very best for last. There are two incredibly rare models of the PET that you have probably never seen or heard of before. The Oscar and the incredibly rare Lucy. Invaluable and no batteries required. Well, that's it for me today from the Commodore Cave. I hope you found it interesting. If you saw anything you'd like more information on, first of all, check out my other videos and see if I've already done a story on it. If not, leave me a message and let me know. If you like the videos, please give me a thumbs up or leave a comment or better still subscribe. 
Until next time, see ya. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you.